Hello class, um, we're in chapter 16 now which deals with reaction energy and today I thought I would show you an example of how we solve uh, for the heat of reaction using Hess's law of summation and specifically using heats of formation uh, equations to do so. So we're calculating heats of reactions and Hess's law of summation uh, tells us that if you add two or more thermochemical equations to get the final equation, then you can also add the heats of reaction to give the final heat of reaction. And again, the equation delta H for the reaction is equal to the sum of the delta H of formation for the products minus the sum of the delta H of formation for the reactants. And again, where the Greek letter here, sigma, is for sum. This also shows us um, whether the net reaction is exothermic, where the delta H is a negative number, or endothermic reaction, where the delta H will be a positive number. And where do we get these uh, heats of formation from. We have uh, tables that we can look up. So as we're writing our equations, we can look up uh, in our textbook or in the tables that I've given you in the chapter packet and get these, uh, these pieces of information, the standard molar enthalpies of formation, and they are in kilojoules per mole. So in calculating these heats of reaction, the overall enthalpy change is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps in the process and that's what we're going to concern ourselves with today. So in order for a reaction to occur we remember that all of the reactants must have their bonds broken and then all of the products must have their bonds formed. So we're going to be calculating the delta H of reaction using individual reaction steps. And again, our overarching theme here is that Hess's law, the delta H, is the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the sum of the heats of formation of the reactants. So we're going to use formation equations for each of the reactants and each of the products to calculate it. And we're going to remember that we have to form each reactant and product from their elements. And the universe takes care of us uh, and makes the elements for us. And then for each of the substances involved that aren't elements, we're going to use equations and make them from their uh, elements. So if we had an example equation, and here we have lead 2 chloride plus chlorine reacts to produce lead 4 or Roman numeral 4 chloride. And we're going to calculate the delta H for this reaction. So we have to look up to start with the delta H of formation for lead 2 chloride. And here it's negative 359.4 kilojoules per mole. The delta H of formation for chlorine is going to be 0 because it's an element, so the universe made it for us. And the delta H of formation for lead 4 chloride is negative 329.2 kilojoules per mole. Now we have to write our reactions. I like to put the equation at the top that we're working with, the reaction, and now we're going to form each thing here in this uh, equation. We're going to have to form the lead 2 and the lead 4. We don't have to form chlorine. The universe did it for us. So lead 2 chloride comes from lead plus chlorine, and there's the delta H of formation that we looked up in a table, and then lead 4 chloride comes from lead and two chlorine molecules, and again there's the delta H that we had looked up. Now in the reaction, lead 2 chloride has to be broken, the bonds have to be broken, so we're going to have to reverse the reaction because over here you'll notice it's on the reactant side and right now it's on the product side. So we just flip or invert this and again that gives us lead 2 chloride on the reactant side. The lead 4 chloride 
has to be made and we can keep it just as it is written here. So again, everything is where it needs to be. Now we're going to rewrite these reactions, uh, taking into account the one that we had to flip so that it was on the reactant side. So now we have lead to chloride again on the reactant side and here is the rest of that equation and again the lead plus the two chlorines. So the next step now is we need to, oh I'm sorry, I need to point out that when we invert this reaction we have to change the sign for the delta H because we have flipped the reaction to give us the reverse reaction. So now what we have to do is add these two together and then simplify. And by simplify I mean crossing out anything that appears the same on both sides. So when we add this whole thing up we have our lead to chloride plus the lead plus the two chlorines yield lead plus chlorine plus the lead for chloride. Now we have to go in and we need to cross out things that appear the same on both sides, so lead and lead cross out. And over here we have two chlorines, and on this side we have one chlorine. That's going to leave us with one chlorine left on this side. And so now we add them up, and our net equation is lead 2 chloride plus chlorine will yield lead 4 chloride. And if you look at this one, and you look at the one that we were trying to form, we see that we've got the correct equation. The last step here is to add up our delta H of formations. So plus 359.4 kilojoules per mole, plus a negative 329.2 is going to have an overall um, heat of reaction of 30.2 kilojoules, and that is a plus 30.2. Now we need to check our answer using Hess's law. So if we check it again, remembering it's the sum of the delta H of formation of the products minus the sum of the delta H of formation of the reactants. So again, I'm plugging in one mole times our value for our product, the lead 4 chloride, minus the one mole times uh, the lead 2 chloride. Remember chlorine isn't here because its formation is zero because it's an element. So again, doing the math, we end up with a delta H of formation of plus 30.2. And that matches what we did on the previous slide. So the delta H is positive, And again, that further indicates that this is an endothermic process. So at this point, uh, that is all for this particular example and we will be doing some more in class very soon.